All right, everyone, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm glad you're here. Uh, my name is Jake, Jake Jersey. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself, my preferred pronouns are he, him, his, and I work here at New York University in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions. Now, I'm one of the admissions counselors here at the university, and essentially my goal is to help students and families just like you in navigating this crazy thing called college admissions. Now, before we get started with our session today, uh, I do want to go ahead, though, and start with a quick poll just to get a sense of who you all are today. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and share a quick poll with you, and I'd like to know, is this the first time that you're learning about New York University? Uh, maybe you've had the chance to attend a session before or come visit us on campus. Uh, let us know. We'd love to get a sense of exactly how much you've learned and familiarized yourself with NYU. Perfect. I see those results coming on in. Excellent. Thanks for participating, everyone. All right. And it looks like, wow. Okay. So for most of you, this is the first time you're learning about NYU. And oh, it's so nice to see four of you actually had the opportunity to come visit us on campus when we were hosting in-person sessions. And I'm so glad you were able to experience NYU in person for yourself. Now, uh, before we get started today, uh, really, I just want to kind of set the stage a little bit here. Uh, really, my goal for today is to help give all of you some insight, some perspective into the New York University experience and everything you need to know leading up to that experience. So I'm going to try to give you some ins and outs about what it's like to be a student here, the global experiences and opportunities, what it's like to go to you know college in places like New York City or Abu Dhabi or Shanghai. But I'm also going to go ahead and go through some of those logistical pieces. We're going to talk about the college admissions process, financial aid, and all the important pieces that you should know as you're getting ready to apply to college and go on your college journey. Now, uh, with that being said, before we get too far into it, I do want to just mention uh, something from the bat here. Uh, let's be candid. 2020 has been a year quite unlike any other. And, you know, I know with a global pandemic going on right now, a lot of our lives have been changed and uprooted. And uh, we're kind of having to adjust to a new normal in a lot of respects. And I just want to let you know that, listen, NYU has seen from the front lines what COVID has done and how the world has changed. And I just want to let you know that you've got people in your corner. You know, flexibility is going to be key this year. And, you know, we hope that you and your families, your friends, your classmates are all staying safe and healthy because, frankly, that is the number one priority right now. And um, regardless, we're not hosting in-person, you know, visits at this time, but I'm glad you were able to come here and meet with us this way because connection is so critical and so key, uh, even though we're still uh, not together in person. I think connecting virtually is, is essential as well. Now, uh, with that being said, uh, I want to go ahead and, and actually get another sense of exactly uh, who you are in our room today. So I'm going to share another quick poll with you because I'd like to know uh, for all of you here that you're starting to do your college journey, uh, what is your expected term of entry? When are you planning to apply uh, to join us at our New York University community? So uh, maybe some of you are seniors. I envision a lot of you are. Maybe we've got some juniors in the room. Uh, maybe there's some transfer students, some early birds who uh, maybe they're freshmen in high school right now. So go ahead and let us know in the in the poll right there. We'd love to get a sense. Fantastic. Okay, wow. So it looks like for the vast majority here, it uh, looks like many of you are applying for the fall 2021 semester, and a handful of you are also considering the fall uh, 2022 semester or 2022 and some other uh, time. So that's really exciting for us to get a better sense of exactly where you are at in your college search process. Now, uh, before we get into the meat and potatoes of our session today, I do want to just go through a few quick housekeeping items. Now, a few things to note. If you're sitting here um, and you're saying to yourself, I have a question. Well, good news is we actually have a Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. So you can actually ask your questions in that Q&A box. And we have admissions counselors and student ambassadors behind the scenes answering those questions. Now, I will mention there is a strong likelihood that I will uh, answer those questions that you have, address those topics you're wondering about, because we are going to go through all of the logistics of the application process, financial aid, student life, and more. Now, uh, with that being said, uh, at the end of the session, we're also going to have a student panel, so you'll have a really cool opportunity to hear some from, uh, you know, to hear from some of our current students about their own experiences at New York University. But before we even get to that student panel, before we talk about the admissions process and all those logistical pieces, I, I think it's really important to start with some historical context because you're here because you want to learn about college and, and what that journey looks like and if NYU is going to be the right fit for you. And I think it's important to start with some historical context to get a sense of place. And uh, NYU, frankly, has a long history. The university is almost 200 years old, and we were started back in 1831 by a man named Albert Gallatin. Now, 
Albert Gallatin was a Treasury Secretary to two different U.S. presidents. And uh, to be candid, Gallatin had this vision of education that didn't look quite traditional for American society. He wanted to create a university that looked more in the European tradition. And he wanted to create an academic institution and a model that wasn't really established by who it didn't admit and who it didn't bring into the campus, but rather by who it included and who it welcomed to our campus. So we really tried to create a campus and a university that broke down walls for access. And Galbert, Albert Gallatin really read, led that charge. And I think uh, that it really lives on in our lifeblood today and our passions and the things that we focus on. But, you know, you see this sign, a campus without walls. And, you know, frankly, NYU is a campus without walls. You know, we're always looking to be more equitable, to be more just, and to help our students go into the world also thinking about creating a just society. But, you know, when we think about this campus without walls, you know, one that prepares its students to be, you know, comfortable anywhere and effective everywhere, you know, we really have a global mindset that has informed our approach to education. And, you know, from our earliest days where we used to consider ourselves in and of the city to today where we consider ourselves to be in and of the greatest cities of the world, we are always trying to break down walls. But how exactly do you break down walls? I know that can sometimes seem like, seem like an ambiguous statement. Uh, here at NYU, we really think it starts with a global mindset. You know, when we think about education and society, you know, walls are being taken down every, way, every day and time zones really don't exist anymore. So when we think about a globally connected educational model, NYU has really redefined that. You know, in addition to our flagship campus here in New York City, we actually have two other degree granting campuses spread across the world in some of the largest cities. These are in Shanghai, China and Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates. Now, in addition to those campuses, we also have more than 10 different academic centers around the world. And these are places where you can study away and travel and explore and experience different cultures. And we're certainly going to talk more about those study away opportunities. But, you know, when we think about these campuses, I, I think it's just really important to understand that as a student at NYU, you're going to have ample opportunity to really challenge yourself to explore the world, to become a globally minded citizen. And, you know, with this approach, you know, we really think that we're preparing our student body to be, you know, successful in this interconnected world. You know, students, as I mentioned, are becoming globally minded citizens, and they can really understand the complexities of this world and leverage those opportunities in today's society. Now, before we get into talking about the global network itself and the different campuses and the ways that you can explore the world as an NYU student, I want to take things back and first start about how do we actually get to a place like NYU? So we're going to talk about admissions and logistics and some pieces like that. But before that, I'm actually curious to know, what are you most interested in learning about today? So if you could go ahead and uh, see this other poll pop up, we'd love to get a sense of what exactly it is you're most excited to learn about today. You know, maybe it is one of the many campuses that make up the NYU system. You know, maybe you're here to just learn about the admissions process or maybe, you know, student life is what you're most curious about. Let us know in that poll because we'd love to get a sense of where your passions and interests lie for today's session. Fantastic. I see those results coming in now. And wow, okay. So it looks like almost half of you are interested in NYU here in New York City. Um, but we've also got a lot of students interested in a variety of topics. So that's great because uh, fortunately for you, we're going to cover it all. But I think it's really helpful for us when we think about the NYU experience Again, to start at the beginning, and the beginning of every NYU student's journey starts with the college application itself. So I want to give you all some more insight into the admissions process itself at a place like New York University. Now, if I can be frank and candid, I understand and I know that the college admissions process can be intimidating. I mean, frankly, when I was applying to college, when I was in high school, I remember being overwhelmed with the applications. And, you know, if you're applying to multiple schools, it can be hard to keep track of all the deadlines and dates and requirements. Uh, what I'm going to try to do for all of you today is make this as simple as possible and really break it down. Now, the first thing you need to know about applying to New York University is that as a student, you need to be applying through something called the Common Application or the Common App. Now, this is a generalized website. It is a platform where you as a student create a profile and use that profile to apply to as many colleges or universities as you want all across the globe. It's a great centralized tool. It takes a bit to set up, but once you've done it, it's really easy to add on schools to apply to. Now, if you do end up deciding to apply to New York University, you've gone and set up your Common App profile and you add us to your list of schools. What happens next? Well, this is what I call the three Ps or the three picks. And when it comes to applying to NYU, you have to make these three selections before you can do anything else. Now, what are those three picks? 
The first one is what I call picking your place. Now, as I mentioned, and we'll talk about more throughout this session, NYU actually has three main campuses that make up our global network. That's New York University's New York City campus, NYU Abu Dhabi, and NYU Shanghai. On the Common App, you're actually going to be able to indicate which campus or campuses you're interested in applying to. And you can indicate one, two, or all three of those campuses. You can actually rank them based on your preferences. So uh, we'll actually be able to consider you for all of them, one of them, two of them, or any combination of such. There's no separate application for all three of the campuses. They all share one. So step number one is simply picking your place. Then comes step number two, and this is what I call the second P, picking your program. Now, when it comes to picking your program, there's something important you should know. As a student applying to the NYU New York campus, you must select a school within the university and a major within that school. So you can't just apply to NYU as a whole. You do have to select a college and a major within it. So, for instance, maybe you're interested in studying medicine someday or going to med school. Well, you might be interested in selecting the College of Arts and Science and then maybe biology as your major. So just note that when you do apply to the New York City campus, you do have to select one of our 10 different undergraduate colleges and a major within it. So step number one is picking your place. Step number two, that's picking your program. Well, the third and final P, the third pick, is what I call picking your plan. And when I say picking your plan, what I mean is that NYU actually has different deadlines for admissions. We have three different dates uh, that students can select from when it comes to submitting that application. So as a first year student applying, here's what you need to know. There's three different deadlines and each one has some important nuances attached to it. Our first two deadlines are what we call early decision deadlines. And these are essentially what are referred to as binding admissions periods. If you apply to NYU during our early decision one or our early decision two deadlines, it means that if you're admitted, you're making an agreement to attend. It's a binding agreement and you should only apply to NYU early decision if it is your clear number one choice and if you have every intention to join us if admitted. So our early decision one deadline, the first one, it actually just passed for the fall 2021 semester. That was on November 1st. But if you still want to apply early decision, good news. We have a second round of early decision. That's called ED2 or early decision two. And that deadline is going to be on January 1st. Now, maybe you want to apply to NYU, but you're not ready to make that binding commitment. Good news. We have a third option. This is what we call regular decision or RD. Regular decision is a non-binding application period, meaning you can apply to NYU regular decision. If you're admitted, it's totally up to you. You make the call, whatever works best for you. So it is non-binding in that regard. So really, when it comes to the application, those are the three main things you have to do. Once you've done the three P's, picking your place, picking your program, and picking your plan, it's pretty easy. All you got to do is get us your materials. So what exactly are those materials? Well, essentially for admissions, uh, we do what's called a holistic evaluations process, meaning we are looking at the entirety of your application. Because we're looking at so many different factors, we require a lot of materials. Of course, we're obviously going to need things you know, like your transcripts, of course, that'll be your official high school transcript. Or for any transfer students, we'll need official college transcripts as well. Uh, we're going to need things like your letters of recommendation. You're going to need to send one from a teacher and one from a counselor. In addition to that, we've got essays that are required. There's going to be two essays you'll need to submit. One is the general college essay called the personal statement. That'll go to any college or university you apply to through the Common App. While the second one is called the YNYU essay. And this is specific to New York University. And really, you should be using this essay to create a fit, to show NYU and the admissions staff why you think you're a good fit for NYU, and conversely, how NYU can help get you to your goals. So all those pieces will come together. We'll be looking at your extracurricular activities, your clubs, you know, your, any jobs you've had, leadership experience. Uh, all of those come together. And, and one other piece to note as well. Historically, NYU has actually required standardized testing of our students. We've had what's called a test flexible admissions policy. And essentially, this meant that as a student, you could select whatever type of standardized testing best represented you, whether it was the AP exams or the SA, or, uh, AP scores or AP, uh, SATs, ACTs, uh, predicted IB exams, etc. We were pretty flexible with the type of standardized testing we would accept. So it was really up to the students. But there's something important you should be aware of. I know a lot of you indicated that you were applying for the 2021 semester. So as I mentioned at the beginning, 2020 as a year has been unlike any other. And because of the uncertainty with COVID and how it's changed testing and options, we've as a university actually gone to what's called a test optional model for our first year students applying for the fall 2021 semester. 
So what that means is that if you're currently a senior in high school applying for fall 2021, please note that you will not be required to submit standardized testing. You do have test scores and you think they strengthen your application and speak well to your abilities, please feel free to send them along. We'll gladly consider them. But if you didn't have a chance to take a test or maybe you don't think it was your best showing, guess what? You won't have to submit that standardized testing. Uh, for any juniors in the room, I anticipate we'll likely require test scores again in the future for the fall of 2022, but it's important that you as seniors be aware of that distinction for this year. But all of those pieces, you know, the academics, the experiences, the student life, the recs, the essays, that all comes together so we can conduct that holistic evaluation. And our admissions committee then looks at you and consider you for, the, for those programs. So we can hopefully identify a good fit. Now, of course, admissions is a big piece of the puzzle, but now that we've discussed the admissions piece, I want to talk about another important fit when you think about the university experience, and that's financial aid. Is it going to be a good financial fit? So here at NYU, I think it's really important to note that we work really, really hard as a university to try to erase walls. And what I mean by that is if you are admitted, we're really committed to working with you to make sure that you know you and your family are going to be supported and that we can make this a reasonable financial you know, match for you and your family. So we can try to make this as affordable as possible to attend. Now, with that being said, I think there's something important you should all know. As a university, we really prioritize what is called need-based financial aid, meaning we're trying to give the scholarships and financial aid to the students that really need it most. Well, how do we assess which students need it most? Well, that's going to rely on you to get us some information. So the important thing to note is that as students applying to NYU, if any of you want to be considered for financial aid or scholarships, you're all going to have to submit and complete something called the CSS financial aid profile. It's really critical to get that turned in so we can evaluate you for financial aid and scholarships. But something else to note, if any of you are also U.S. citizens or permanent residents, in addition to that CSS profile, you're also going to have to get us something called the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid. So both of those items get put together. Uh, you're going to need to get with your, you know, your parents or your guardians typically. Uh, it requires tax information. They do take a lot of time. You're going to get those documents and get them turned into us uh, in conjunction roughly with your application. Now, a lot of students think they need to wait till they're admitted to apply for financial aid. And it's important to know that at NYU, you need to be submitting your financial aid application and documents roughly in conjunction with your admissions application. The reason being is that when you get your admissions decision at NYU, we're also going to get your financial aid package. So please be aware that the deadlines are really, really close to the admissions deadline. So for instance, if any of you in this room applied early decision one to NYU, the financial aid deadline was two weeks later on November 15th. Similarly, if any of you decide to apply early decision two, remember that date is January 1st, the financial aid deadline will be two weeks later on January 15th. But you know, in short, hopefully this gives you a sense of how to apply to NYU, to how to understand the financial aid process. But while that is important to know, I think what's arguably more important is understanding why NYU. And I want to shift gears to talk a little bit about why NYU and why it might be a good match for you. But for those of you that aren't aware, I, I want to kind of mention something else about the experience, particularly for those of you that are in high school. Now, if any of you are thinking about why NYU and you want to get a better sense of if this place is going to be a good match for you before you submit that application. We actually have some really cool opportunities for you to experience NYU before you actually apply and before you ever come to our campus. We have something called pre-college, which is essentially for high school students and middle school students who want to see what the NYU experience is like. You'll have the opportunity to take classes, get college credit, uh, and often in some instances you'll be able to come stay in residence halls and just really experience what it's like to be an NYU student. But uh, if any of you are interested in this, uh, I, I definitely would consider looking into it. You'll get to see what it's like to learn from some of the most uh, really exciting professors and faculty, not just here in New York City, but frankly in the world that are here on our campus working with students. But pre-college is just one of the many programs that we have for high school students. You know, we have performing arts programs in Tisch for students, uh, STEM programs at our Tandon School of Engineering, journalism programs, pre-law programs, and so many more. Frankly, there is a high school program for everyone. So feel free to check us out online. You just go to nyu.edu forward slash high school and you'll find more information about that pre-college process. But uh, with that being said, I hope you at least have a sense of the logistics, you know, the back end pieces that come before becoming a New York University student. But with that, you know, with that being said, I, I think it's important to start thinking about what happens after a student joins us here at NYU. And I want to talk a little bit about what makes New York University 
NYU and the special place that it is. Because frankly, this is a university. This is a place that never sleeps. You know, our students, our staff, our faculty, we are, you know, without time zone restrictions because we have campuses and sites all over the world. At every single time of the day, someone associated with NYU do, is doing cool research. They're getting out into the field. They're, you know, studying, exchanging ideas and cultures and languages. And, you know, as an NYU student, we want to give you access to those global opportunities. Now, when it comes to applying for, for admissions, as I mentioned, you'll be able to indicate an interest in one, two, or all three of the academic campuses that kind of make up our network. But I want to give you a better sense of what that network looks like, because regardless of which campus you call home, every student at each one of our campuses is going to have the opportunity to move through NYU's network to obtain a truly global education, which I, I just think you can't undervalue. Now, if you look at this map here, you're going to actually get to see the true sheer scale and volume of NYU's network, because frankly, we have redefined what a global education should look like. You know, we believe that boundaries, frankly, are imaginary. And at a place like NYU, you're going to have op you know, ample opportunities to kind of move across this network to become fluid and fluent across countries, across continents, across cultures, and, and, and so many more. But as you're looking at this map, you're going to see those three main campuses highlighted in color. Those are the ones I've mentioned before. New York City, Abu Dhabi, Shanghai. These are the backbone of the NYU network. These are the main campuses where you as a student, uh, if admitted, would spend the majority of your time at. These are the degree-granting campuses. Now, in addition to those three, however, you're going to see all of those other cities, places like Paris. You're going to see places like Florence, London, Madrid, Buenos Aires, and so many more. These cities are the NYU Global Network. And what we've done is, you know, frankly, we've, we've kind of taken a radical approach to redefining how study abroad looks like, uh, not just in America, but for global universities as a whole. As opposed to doing a student exchange with another school or university, uh, you don't have to go to another school if you want to study abroad. At NYU, you simply pick another site and you can go spend a semester or a year at one of these places. You know, if you've ever wanted to study art history, you can go do a semester in Florence, Italy. You know, if you've wanted to learn more about global politics, you know, you can go to Washington, D.C. and see politics up front for yourself. You have so many ways to see the world in some really exciting and challenging and, I think, you know, groundbreaking types of ways at a place like this university. Now, a few things to note about our network. You know, because these are all NYU campuses and sites, uh, you can rest easy knowing that English is going to be the primary language of instruction at all of these sites. Your financial aid, your scholarships, it's all going to travel with you. And you can also rest easy knowing that your credits are going to transfer seamlessly because it's not going to another school. It's simply going to NYU somewhere else where you'll be, you know, being taught by NYU professors with NYU classmates and NYU staff. But, you know, much like the students and the staff, I think it's important to know that our faculty are also moving across this network. And they frankly are uninhibited by time zones and comfort zones. And I want to talk about the faculty now because I think it is so critical to learn more and understand more about the impact that they make for our students. Because being that we have such great loca locations across the world in places like New York City and Shanghai and Abu Dhabi and all of those academic centers, uh, we attract a really accomplished cohort of faculty members doing some really amazing research. You know, these faculty members have won, you know, really the highest terminal awards and degrees and recognitions in their respective fields. You know, our faculty members have won the Nobel Peace Prizes, the uh, MacArthur Genius Grants, the National Science, uh, the National Medal of Science Awards, and then in the performing arts alone, we have Emmy winners, uh, Grammy winners, Oscar winners, Pulitzer Prize recipients, Tony Prize recipients, and, and so much more. So the faculty that you're getting to work with are some of the most accomplished in the world, but I have to tell you, regardless of which academic program you're choosing, whether it's, you know, being in a lab studying cells, whether it's, you know, getting out into the field and studying art or going, you know, and seeing, uh, you know, healthcare and practice, regardless of which academic program you're in, NYU students are frankly going to learn from some of the best faculty in the world. And, you know, when we talk about that faculty opportunity, you know, it really does give you a lot of ways to get involved in research because NYU is what we call a tier one research institution. Uh, what this means is that uh, we are a large university that has a lot of funding for our faculty to be doing research, but also this translates down to you as students having funding and support to do your own original research or to work collaboratively with professors and faculty members on the research that they're doing. You know, 
but really the opportunities are endless. There are dozens of research facilities on our campus. There's dozens of laboratories. There are tons of artistic installations. If you want funding to go travel to a conference and present your research, you can get that funding. You know, if you want to do independent study or, or do a study abroad semester doing research in a different country on, you know, a political climate in a different area, you're going to have support to help you do that. I just think there are so many opportunities at a place like NYU because it's important to note uh, not only are we a tier one research institution, but we're the largest private research university in the country. And because of that, you're going to have a lot of support financially, but also in your corner to help you navigate the process for applying for research and grant funding. But, you know, up until this point, we've talked a lot about the university and the culture as a whole. But as I noted multiple times, when you do apply to NYU, you're going to have to select a campus. You're going to have to determine which one or which ones are going to be the best fit for you. So although many of them do share qualities across the three campuses, uh, each one does also have its own distinct sense of place and what they can offer students. So I want to start talking about our first campus, and that, I think, stands to reason uh, to start with New York City. So uh, what I think you need to know about our New York City campus is this is the flagship campus. This is where it all started. It's also the largest of the three main campuses. You've got more than 20,000 undergraduate students here, and in addition to that, thousands more graduate students working on their PhDs, MBAs, master's degrees, they're in law school, med school, and so much more. Now, this campus itself, uh, we have more than 230 different major areas of study. We offer more than 4,000 different courses here, so it is a big campus with a lot going on. But with that being said, don't fear, because despite the size, our student to faculty ratio is 10 to 1, and more than 60% of the classes we offer actually have 20 or fewer students. So you are going to have that personal opportunity to connect. But speaking about connection, uh, when you're starting to think about where you find yourself connecting academically, I want to get a sense of what that might look like for you. So I want to show a quick poll real quick, and I'd be curious to know which academic discipline are you most interested in? Maybe you're thinking about business or STEM or maybe the health sciences or social sciences. Let us know in that poll because I'd love to get a sense of where you are all thinking right now. Awesome, those results are coming in right now. Perfect. All right, and let's see what we've got here. Okay, so it looks like, wow, we've got a really even distribution. So it looks like the students here today, you are representing a broad swath of academic interest. So with that being said, I'm really going to try to give you all a broad swath of information here to give you the high level picture of academics at NYU because as I mentioned there are thousands and thousands and thousands of courses and more than 200 majors but we break that all up into 10 different undergraduate colleges and schools so uh, really dependent on your interest it's likely we're going to have something for you you know maybe if you're interested in the arts or media uh, we actually have a few different options you've got the Tisch School of the Arts which is going to have more of your traditional performance programs and things like dance and drama you also have Steinhardt which has a lot of our music performance programs and our teaching and education offerings as well you know separate from that maybe if you're also in work interested in working with people not in education maybe in something like healthcare or social social work we do have a few options you've got the Myers College of Nursing which is your direct entry nursing school you've got the Silver School of Social Work so maybe you're interested in you know becoming a therapist someday you've got a lot of options there uh, speaking of therapy maybe you're interested in working with people but in a different way uh, we have a lot of options in, this, in the social sciences, in the humanities, in those areas. Uh, the College of Arts and Science is our largest school at NYU and is home to programs like psychology, sociology, philosophy, and so much more. You're also going to find STEM programs in there. This is things like biology, chemistry, physics, and beyond. Uh, speaking of STEM, we do have Tandon, which is our school of engineering as well. So for any of you that are interested in robotics or computer science or mechanical engineering, we've likely got a great fit for you. Uh, a lot of the STEM programs also intersect with technology and business, and we do have a few options for business. You've got the Stern School of Business, which is more your traditional business degree, um, and then you've also got the School of Professional Studies, which is more of your hyper-focused, hyper-niche business areas. Uh, these are areas in things like sports management, real estate, hospitality, and uh, this is, needless to say, just a broad overview to academics at NYU, and there are lots of different schools for lots of different student interests. And in fact, if you have your own interests, we actually have something called Gallatin, which is our School of Individualized Study, where you can build your own major and really have an opportunity to travel across the entire spectrum at a place like NYU. But, you know, with that being said, regardless of your major, by the time you graduate from NYU, we really think you're going to be an expert in your area of study, whatever that is. But, you know, thinking about the NYU New York campus itself, a lot of people think that we're just located 
in southern, you know, lower Manhattan, you know, in an area called Greenwich Village. And while this is where we started in Greenwich Village, we've also grown beyond that because NYU is truly a New York City institution. Uh, in fact, our Tandon School of Engineering is now located in Brooklyn. Uh, it's in a really cool part called the Metro Tech Center, which is really this kind of thriving tech metropolis area. So you've got a lot of startups, a lot of companies in tech. You'll find your Googles, Facebooks. A lot of them have offices in this area. Uh, needless to say, the you know kind of commute and access between the two is pretty quick. Uh, NYU uh, is pretty active in helping students get around with shuttle services. We've got, of course, the public transportation through the subway, but. NYU itself as a campus is, you know, the New York City campus is really a microcosm of the university. And I think the experience here really does mirror your traditional metropolitan college experience. But, you know, now that you've learned a little bit more about the New York City campus, I want to shift gears a little bit and, and kind of take you on a global exploration here, because I want to give you a glimpse into life as a student at our two other global academic campuses. And these are Abu Dhabi and Shanghai. So I want to start in Abu Dhabi now, because uh, when you think about the NYU Abu Dhabi campus, uh, the second of our three main campuses, this is going to look a lot different from the New York City campus. Uh, for a quick geography lesson, uh, NYU Abu Dhabi is located in the United Arab Emirates. Um, for just kind of a, I find oftentimes that students might not be as familiar with Abu Dhabi, but a lot of them are more familiar with the neighboring Emirate, which is called Dubai. So we're a pretty quick commute to get over to Dubai. but. When you think about Abu Dhabi as a place, this is a thriving cultural hub within the Middle East. Uh, you've got tons of different artistic venues. You've got the new Louvre Museum here. Uh, really, this place is tons of restaurant and dining and entertainment. And it's really a microcosm of the entire world because it is one of the most diverse cities on the planet. Now, when you think about NYU's Abu Dhabi campus, um, the actual place that it's located is in a place called Sadiat Island, which actually directly translates to Happiness Island, which I think is the greatest name for a place to attend college on Happiness Island. Now, uh, to give you a better sense of the actual campus and community here, this one, as I mentioned, is a lot smaller than NYU New York. It's just over 1,400 undergraduate students. But what I think is truly impressive is of that 1,400 students, they represent more than 110 different countries. Uh, in the admissions office here, we love to, you know, we lovingly refer to this campus as the mini United Nations because this is a great place to be because every single day is a masterclass in cross-cultural interactions. You are meeting students from different backgrounds, perspectives, faiths, cultures, locations, all coming together. I think it is really a great way to get that broad, you know, world-spanning experience. Now, when we think about this campus as well, also, sorry if you hear the alarms, I live in New York City, so the fire, uh, fire departments never stop and things never seem to stop in New York City. But I think that's a really good way when we think about NYU students at the world, uh, because they are never stopping as well. But with the NYU Abu Dhabi campus, uh, I do want to just mention one other piece, because this is frankly one of the most diverse student bodies in the world. So I was alluding to earlier, they represent a ton of different countries. And the students here really are passionate about studying things like global politics and affairs, societal affairs, the social sciences, but they also are studying things in the sciences and technology and the humanities and the performing arts. But I wanna go ahead and take us on another kind of plane trip here. And let's move a few thousand miles away and go from Abu Dhabi to our campus in Shanghai. Now, for another geography lesson, NYU Shanghai. Uh, basically, Shanghai is the largest city in China. And where our campus is located is in uh, what's essentially the financial district of Shanghai. So kind of like the Wall Street equivalent here in New York City, uh, the NYU Shanghai campus is also in a pretty thriving uh, kind of economic sector in Shanghai. Now, basically, this campus was built with an understanding that, you know, China is such a big player in the world stage that as a university, we needed to be getting our students uh, really in the forefront of the China experience. So we built this campus uh, really to help our students see how China interacts in that global stage. So when you think about the student body here, uh, half of the students are actually Chinese nationals and half are coming uh, from the rest of the world. So it's really kind of an intersection between China and the rest of the planet. So when you think about how students kind of work and, and kind of thrive at a place like this, a lot of the areas of study I see are in things like technology and STEM programs, also in a lot of uh, areas like global finance and economics, but uh, more so for the experience itself, there are, there are a few critical pieces to be aware. First off, all of the students that graduate from NYU's Shanghai campus are actually going to graduate with Mandarin Chinese proficiency. Now, I think this is really important because uh, students that graduate from this campus are really going to have a competitive edge in a global job market, being able to speak 
uh, with confidence, Mandarin Chinese, even if you've never seen a, you know, a character before or spoken a word of Mandarin, uh, is really a competitive edge to have. And another edge that our graduates get is that they actually leave with two different degrees from this campus. One is going to be an NYU degree, while the other is an NYU Shanghai degree, which is actually certified by the Chinese Ministry of Education. And what this does is just opens up more opportunities and avenues for students that want to live and work within China or really the rest of Asia or the world. Now, no matter which campus you call home, uh, frankly, we only think that there's one place that's going to prepare you, you know, for the world of connections and interrelations, and that's NYU. You know, there is nowhere that is beyond our reach and our ability to get you where you need to get uh, where you need to go. So uh, with that being said, when we think about where you're going and all of these different places, I, listen, I, I know it can sometimes feel intimidating. You know, the world is a big place. There's a lot of campuses. That's a lot of programs and a lot of information. But, you know, as NYU students, we do want to challenge you to become comfortable being uncomfortable, to step outside of those comfort zones, to Think about the world critically to explore different places and cultures. Uh, we think that is the best way to help get you prepared for a new century and a new type of education. Uh, you know, for this world, again, where barriers really don't exist, where, as you can see, we're doing this meeting through Zoom, where people from across the world are all sitting on here together. Uh, cultural competency is, frankly, one of the most valuable skills that employers are looking for, and we think we do a really great job of helping you find that. But regardless of which campus you select, you know, students are going to take courses both inside and outside of their chosen major, which we think provides you both breadth across different disciplines and depth within a chosen area of concentration. Now, as I mentioned, when it comes to comfort zones, we do want you to step outside of them, but you can also rest easy knowing that you don't have to be afraid because there are going to be people there supporting you and getting your back. We've got an amazing staff and faculty that are there to support you every single step of the way. And there are frankly a lot of resources on our campus to help make sure you feel supported and you're doing well within your classes and just as a person. You know, we have tons of different centers on campus that provide the entire spectrum of needs from medical attention to discounted concert tickets and more. There's academic support in the form of tutoring. You know, we have health and wellness centers that don't just focus on physical health, but mental health, because that is just as important. You know, when you think about the bevy of services at a place like NYU, you can rest easy knowing that pretty much every need you're going to have will be met here at a place like us. You're going to have a really robust team there getting your back every single step of the way. And, you know, while we do encourage students to get outside of their comfort zones, again, NYU is always going to provide support along the way. Now, when we talk about support along the way and, and feeling comfortable, I think it's important to know that NYU does have a distinct sense of place. And if you are thinking about where you're going to go for your college experience, it's important to think about that college fit piece and where you're going to be successful. Because uh, NYU looks a lot different from most colleges or universities, whether it's in New York City or Shanghai or Abu Dhabi. These are thriving global centers. These are not your small college towns. And these places are diverse and energetic and exciting. You know, whichever city you're in, of course, the classroom experience is important. But equally as important is what happens when you leave the classroom, the opportunities you have when you walk out into the streets of these cities, you know, the opportunities for cultural engagement, to go try new food, to hear new music, to see new cinema. Uh, there is just so much that's a part of the NYU experience that we value. But again, this doesn't look like every college or university, and that's something we really pride ourselves on. But, you know, I think another important part of the student experience is also getting involved in extracurriculars on our campus. Now, something important you should be aware of is that each one of our campuses, Abu Dhabi, Shanghai, New York City, each one of them has their own dedicated student affairs office. And basically, these are there to help you find clubs and organizations, to find community within this university. You know, these clubs and organizations run the entire gamut. They range from your academic clubs, things like Model United Nations and Debate Club, to more of your social organizations, things like Fraternity and Sorority Life, to the Improv Clubs, Dungeons and Dragons, Acapella, and more. You're going to find faith-based communities. Uh, you're going to find identity and cultural-driven communities. There are clubs and organizations and communities for every type of student, regardless of what identity you have or what your passions are or what sport you want to play. There is something here for every type of student. And, you know, when I think about the NYU New York campus, I really consider it a community of micro-communities. And I think that's a really good way to think about the experience here. But, you know, there's sports. There is so much to do at a place like this. Uh, I think another important piece of the student experience, though, is that uh, we do offer some pretty robust residential options. So 
Across all three of our campuses, it's important to know that we do guarantee housing for all four years if you want it. So uh, the student experience, I think, really ties in with the residential experience. Now, at New York City's campus, it isn't required, but I find that many students do choose to pursue it because it's a great way to make connections when you start at a place like NYU. But regardless of your interests, you know, you're going to be able to find a community, whether inside of the residence hall or outside, you know, of similar students who have similar passions and ideas. So. Uh, you know, hopefully this gives you a better sense about the NYU student experience, but there is one critical piece about the student experience that I haven't touched on yet, and that's internships and job opportunities, because while I think it's helpful to talk about what happens before college, it's also important to think about what happens next, and uh, frankly, NYU does a really good job of helping prepare our students for those job markets to give you some really unique internship opportunities. Uh, here at NYU, we have what's called Wasserman. This is our career development center, and they have a full menu of career services from things like resume review to mock interviews. Um, they're going to do workshops. They're going to have sessions. They will bring employers to campus to have actual job fairs here. And a lot of them do hire on spot. You know, in addition to the job opportunities where we see a ton of our students getting placed into uh, jobs or graduate school within six months of graduating. In fact, more than 90% of our students are going right into grad school or jobs when they leave our campus. But in addition to that, the internship opportunities at a place like NYU are endless. Uh, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of internships available through our network. And I've seen students internship in most every single sector, whether it was working, you know, doing an internship with MTV or HBO, Spotify, whether it was, you know, the Human Rights Council or, you know, Audi Motors or really anything in between. I've seen students uh, do internships in most sectors. I, I think there's a lot of opportunities afforded to NYU students. Frankly, because one, we are an old university with a long history of building relationships, and two, because of our locations in some of the best cities in the world where you see a lot of companies and organizations putting their headquarters where we can get you out into the field to get you those hands-on experiences. But, you know, while I know this was fast and we just covered a lot of information, uh, I hope this has been helpful for you. And I hope this has given you an idea about New York University and the place that we are and the opportunities both globally and job-wise and experiential that we can provide. But, you know, while I certainly have some good information, I think it's helpful to hear from our students. And this is gonna conclude the official formal presentation portion. And I wanna shift gears to my favorite part, which is our student panel. Um, now, I know you're probably sick of hearing my voice. I know I certainly am. And you're sick of hearing the fire trucks going down my street, but I can assure you, you will not grow tired of hearing from our students. So I want to go ahead and introduce them now. We've got three amazing students joining us here today. So uh, I'm going to ask them to uh, come on and introduce themselves. I'm going to start. Um, Cassie, if you want to hop on and introduce yourself, that would be fantastic. Yeah, um, hi everyone. My name is Cassie. Um, I use she, her pronouns. Um, I am a second year studying game design in the Tisch School of the Arts, pursuing a double minor in film and television and business entertainment, media and technology. That's a mouthful. Um, I'm originally from New Jersey and I'm here right now. Um, and some things that I was involved in when I was on campus was um, the resident hall eco reps program which is basically promoting sustainability within the um, resident halls i also do a lot in terms of um, the, uh, helping like first year students into um, nyu so i've done orientation leader programs i've done welcome week um, i'm also an admissions ambassador talking to you guys usually for on campus um, and yeah i was also in uh, student council when i was also living in a resident hall you must have so much free time considering you're not really doing much right now. It must be so boring. I know. I miss my busy schedule, to be honest. <laughs> thanks, Cassie. Well, I want to go ahead and have Duncan introduce themselves now. So thanks, Duncan. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, really glad to be here. My name is Duncan, and I am a senior in the Gallatin School of Individualized Study. I'm studying real estate, sustainability, and experience design, and I'm originally from Ottawa, Canada. Uh, I use he, him program, uh, pronouns, and some things that I've been involved in are uh, I'm an admissions ambassador, and I've been very involved in residential life. So, for example, I was on uh, my freshman year residence halls hall council. Uh, I was on IRHC, which is sort of our version of the student government for residential life, and I was also an RA last year in my residence hall. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Duncan. And last, but certainly not least, uh, Ray, if you want to come introduce yourself, that would be great. Yes, for sure. Sorry, I was muted. Hello, everybody. My name is Rhea. Um, I am a junior in the GLS School, so the Global Liberal Studies School, with a dance minor through the Tisch School of the Arts. 
I use she, her, herself pronouns. I'm originally from Kingston, Jamaica. And the stuff I've been involved in, I'm on the e-board for the Caribbean Students Association at NYU. Um, also do this job. So I'm an admissions ambassador. So I give the tours and answer the phones and lots of exciting stuff. And yeah, I'm currently in Jamaica, staying here for the semester. And yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Rhea. And actually, I, I'm glad you mentioned that you are currently in Jamaica right now, because I think that brings up a, a good question that I want to ask of you, because um, as I talked about at the beginning, this year has been quite unlike any other, to say the least. Um, as you can see, I'm not doing this, this visit from a nice NYU on-campus session or building. This is from my small apartment in the East Village. So welcome to New York City, everyone. But I'm curious to know, um, I'd love to get a sense of how kind of COVID has changed things for all of you as students. And, and maybe, you know, what was, maybe you can talk about what that transition was like going from uh, in-person classes to online or a hybrid for some of you. Uh, just for any of our guests that are here, uh, just to give you kind of a sense, this fall, uh, NYU transitioned to a hybrid model of education. So we were hosting a mix of in-person and online classes. So I'd love to hear about how that's been for any of you, if you have experiences you'd like to share. All right, so I see we've got some hands raised here. Perfect. Cassie, do you want to share? Yeah, of course. Um, so obviously last year it was such a surprise to all of NYU students to realize that like we had to go home in the middle of the semester, and I think that it solidified the severity of the situation. Um, but NYU was, it, specifically for my classes at least, they were really, really understanding um, of the situation and how much of an emotional toll it can be on our students. Um, so a lot of the transition was basically just being understanding, being compassionate, and adapting to the students in my classes. So for example, since I'm a game design student, a lot of my classes are computer-based and focused. So I'm really, really fortunate that my classes are basically, I'm on the laptop even in a classroom. So what they basically did was, um, in terms of communication, they didn't want us to learn a new type of platform. So um, if, you're, if you're familiar, we started using Discord, which is like a very popular gaming social platform. So some of my professors started to use Discord instead of like trying to learn a new like professional platform or something in terms of communication. And it really showed that the professors were willing to adapt to the students' needs and also the circumstances. I think that's so so great to hear. I think adaptability is just so key in 2020 and I think for the future too. Um, yeah, Rhea, what, what do you want to share on that piece? Yeah, for sure. So I'll talk about a little about the end of last semester and then into this semester because we started to go online in the middle of the spring semester. Um, so for me, um, it was... It was a mix. It depended on the classes. So like, for example, I was taking a choreography class last um, spring. And so that was in studio. And then we had to go online. And that at first was a bit difficult just because obviously dancing over Zoom, like that's, you know, that's weird. Yeah, you have to get used to it. But I found my professor to be, I agree with Cassie, very just willing to adapt and willing to listen to us so she would often ask us you know do you think this is effective like do you guys want to come to class today you know do you think this online thing is effective how do you think we could um make the best of this whether we're gonna perform stuff live in class or do you prefer recording things outside of class and then showing them in class or it was just a lot about question and answer and really just trying to navigate the space it wasn't what i appreciated is it wasn't like okay, we're online and everything is back to normal. Like, we're just going to pretend like nothing happened, you know? It was very, like, acknowledging of what's going on and a lot of asking for our opinion and feedback and getting, you know, suggestions and stuff like that. So I'd say overall, I think NYU has an edge maybe over other universities just because it was a lot of questioning and asking, you know, like, we know that this is difficult and we need the help from you all to tell us, you know, what's the best thing to do for you guys. And so, I don't know, I appreciate that. I appreciated that about transitioning um, to online. But I love hearing about that collaborative nature. I think that's, that's so cool to hear that professors are so open and receptive to kind of adjusting. I mean, I don't know about any of you, but I've been feeling the Zoom fatigue, something fierce-like over the last few months. And for all of our attendees, I'm sure many of you have been as well. So I think flexibility is uh, so critical. Now, uh, I've got a lot of great questions that are coming in here from our guests. So. Um, 
you know, something I, I'm kind of curious to get a, a sense of, um, we talked a little bit about how you've kind of connected with your professors during this time, but I'd be curious to know, um, even though NYU is a fairly large student body, uh, have you been able to have close connections and relationships with um, any of your teachers or faculty members? Yeah, Duncan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had um, a lot of opportunities to connect with my professors outside of the classroom, all of them. Uh, you know, speaking to what Cassie and Reyes said, have been extremely adaptable and flexible and uh, accommodating to people's different living situations, people's different, you know, needs or learning styles or whatnot, recognizing that some people are in different time zones. So uh, what I've seen this year is that um, it's, it's sort of atypical because normally professors have set office hours and you can come to them on a weekly basis on Mondays or Tuesdays or whatever day of the week they choose. And that's sort of set in stone. But uh, over the course of the last two semesters, I've seen that they've been extremely flexible, um, saying, you know, we don't really have set office hours, just send us an email and whatever's convenient for you, we'll do our best to meet with you. Um, so that's been really great and really uh, ideal way to connect with professors and get extra help or, you know, clarify anything or uh, even just have an opportunity to speak with them outside of class. Awesome. Thanks, Duncan. Yeah, Cassie, what you got for us? Yeah, it's definitely easy to foster a relationship with your professors, um, especially for the professors in game design. I know that they're all like super, super chill. They're really accepting and they, they honestly just want to teach you as much as possible um, in the college experience and also like in the professional space because they're all working in the field. So they, they have so much knowledge that they just want to bring on to us um, and it's up to the students to want to create that relationship. Of course, you're going to have it in the, in the classroom, but I think going to office hours is such a undermined um, like resource that students have. So um, specifically for a class that I'm taking now that isn't in game design, um, I'm taking a tandem class called Climate Change in Cities. And we're basically talking about urban planning and like how to be sustainable when we're talking about cities. Um, and I went to the office hours for this professor because I was playing a game that had to do with like farming on Mars and it had so much to like relate to the class. And I thought it was such a perfect um, recommendation for my professor because she told me she liked playing games as well. So I ended up talking to her for like half an hour after class about this game and how it was so interesting how I could learn about <laughs> sustainability and farming and all this kind of stuff um, in a game as well as in the classroom at NYU. So fostering that kind of relationship is so easy, especially when you have so many different things that you want to talk to about um, about two professors. I think that's so cool to hear. And I'm sorry, I'm smiling so much because when you said a farming game, I only think of that Facebook farming game. I don't know if any of you remember that, but I'm probably dating myself a little bit here, but I'm not going to go down that road. But, you know, Cassie and Duncan, you both brought up really interesting points because you mentioned uh, you, you both said something to the, the extent of not just inside the classroom, but outside of the classroom. And I think that brings up a really good point because I've got a question here uh, from Ben. And Ben asks, how do you spend your time in New York when not attending classes? What are you all doing outside of the classroom to kind of supplement your student experience? Yeah, Rhea. Yeah, well, for me, I'm a big lover of the performing arts, um, dance and theater, things that are really important to me. And so stuff I do outside of class, um, NYU Skirball Theater always has shows going on. And so, for example, one of my dream companies is Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. And their second company, Ailey 2, I'll never forget, freshman year, I was performing at Skirball. And I was living in Lipton Hall, which is like a two-minute walk from Skirball. And I remember my RA was like, you know, everyone, we have free tickets to Ailey 2 tonight if anybody wants to go. And we got to see the season, and it was fantastic. And so I just go to shows. Like, we get discounts on a lot of different, like, off-Broadway shows. Or like some of my friends do stand-up comedy, so like I'll go and watch stand-up comedy shows. Um, I would just say, yeah, I just go watch shows and you can get a bunch of different really good discounts just from being an NYU student, which is really awesome. So if you're not seeing the show for free, you're probably seeing it for like $5, $15. Um, so yeah, that's what I do outside of school. That's great. Yeah, Duncan, what about you? What's, what's it been like outside of the classroom for you? Um, I mean, right now, obviously, we, it's not the same as usual. I'm in Canada. I'm not in New York. But typically, um, as NYU students, uh, most of our classes and most of the programs sort of take place around the Washington Square Park area. So we're really lucky in that sense because there is so much going on in that area. It's, it's sort of the big social hub uh, and so many, uh, you know, surrounding areas that have, you know, restaurants, 
uh, little shopping areas, lots of fun cultural things. Uh, and then also just Washington Square Park in itself is a really awesome place to hang out. Um, and even though, you know, it doesn't belong to NYU, we sort of like to pretend it does because we're in there so often. So that's really great. And also um, one of my favorite things about my classes is that being in New York City means that pretty much every NYU building is on the threshold of like one of the most exciting cities in the world. And I think our professors really try to leverage that um, and take advantage of that inside our classes. So I've had a number of classes where, you know, we've been talking about uh, a given concept or something happening in the world. And my professors will give us instructions to go out into the city, to go do this thing, experience, experience this thing, go see the show, go take a walk in this park, go to this museum and whatnot, uh, and then come back to class and discuss it. So that's something that I really loved about my actual class is the fact that they recognize the benefit of being in New York and really take advantage of that. I think that's so great to hear about, you know, you being able to leverage kind of the opportunities outside of the classroom. Um, so for our guests, I have to say, there are so many great questions here I want to get to. And while I personally wish I could hang out with you for the next uh, hour or two and chat through them, uh, I don't have the time, unfortunately, our students don't, but I'm going to ask one final question uh, before we move on. So one final question here, and I think this is a, a, a great question. And someone asked, um, they said, what do you wish you knew about NYU before you got here? What is one thing you wish you knew before coming to NYU? And you want to want to tackle that one? Tough question, right? Well, I'll tell you, when I moved from Colorado, what I wish I knew was that Birkenstocks were not acceptable footwear in New York City, and that Patagonia is not, is not as popular here, but that's going off on a tangent. Uh, Cassie, what do you got for us? Um, yeah, so NYU was my dream school, and I tried to do as much research as possible on the school, you know, to write my YNYU essay, and just to get a true sense of the campus and the community. And while I totally knew that the community would be accepting, I just didn't realize how accepting they were going to be. Um, and I, I just can't emphasize this enough. Like the amount of acceptance that I got going into NYU was just so overwhelming. Like once I got there, like people were asking for pronouns, people were asking about our passions and just like everything. And they wanted to know so much about you and even if I felt insecure about what I was saying, they would be they would be hyping me up, and it, it felt so good to just be surrounded by people who were supporting you. And it wasn't like a competitive, like college campus um, environment. So it's like I, I knew that they were going to be accepting, you know, but I just didn't realize how supporting and amazing it was going to be um, in terms of being at NYU and having this kind of independent lifestyle, but still having such a strong community within the city. Cassie, isn't it amazing where you have a whole student body of hype men every single day just giving you support? I I love that. Uh, Raya, how about you? What's one thing you wish you knew before? Yeah, Cassie kind of stole every time I answer, but it's so funny. I was going to say the same, not the same thing, but along the same line. So I think one thing I wish I knew or that surprised me is how much my professors and they don't even have to be professors could be advisors just people that are older than you that are in the same field as you how much they really care about you doing well i think because nyu is a pretty big university in comparison to other smaller schools and i feel like a lot of people have this misconception that you know you're going to go to this big school and like you're not going to have any relationships with people because it's so many students so how could you have you know whatever and i feel like i that was really crazy to me like just how much my advisor cares for me and how much like my professors care for me and I've even turned like one of my professors into my like artistic mentor and she literally sent me a birthday gift from New York to Jamaica which is so crazy yeah so I just think that surprised me like how much people really really care about you and want to see you succeed even within this huge um school and you know that's a uh, they really cared because the shipping cost has got to be more than the gift was too you know so respect for that <laughs> all right duncan last but certainly not least what you got for us um as an international student i was really really timid about the prospect of making friends and meeting people because i knew absolutely nobody going to nyu had no acquaintances didn't know anybody who lived in the city i was like i'm not even from this country how am i going to meet people um, especially at a school that is so large. We've got like 26, 27,000 undergraduates. Um, and from everything that I heard and from attending 
uh, various information sessions, it sounded like the university was really decentralized and that it was um, really, you know, spread all across New York City. And I was like, I have no idea how I'm going to be able to lead people. Uh, and that turned out to be a really, really big misconception because once you get there, you realize that as big as the university is, it starts to feel a lot smaller. Once you start to break it up into your classes, your your clubs and activities, your residence halls, and it starts to feel, um, you know, as we often say, like a community of micro communities. And uh, there are so many ways to make friends. And there is a certain expectation that you you have to be a little more extroverted than might be natural to you. Uh, but that's just honestly a part of being like a real person and especially uh, a part of living in New York City. So um, I, in hindsight, wish I had not had that fear so much because it turned out to be completely debunked. Um, but also it made me, I think, much more extroverted and much more uh, willing to, to seek out, you know, unique friendships and uh, to, to take advantage of everything around me. That's great. Hey, thanks so much, Duncan. And, and thanks to all of our ambassadors. Um, this The experience is just so much better having your perspectives. And, and I wish I could keep hanging out with you all for a long time more, but uh, dinner is a call-in for all of us. I know a lot of our students here have to get ready to go back to studying because this is actually a, a weekday. But, uh, you know, if you as our guests are interested in connecting with us, you know, further, uh, the good news is we do have more opportunities to connect. Uh, we're actually going to be hosting different sessions that you can attend to find out more about NYU. We've got our Destination NYU events, which is basically our big marquee event. We're going to share more information about us as a university. We'll provide you with opportunities to engage with more of our students, just like our ambassadors today. And we're going to let them showcase their work as well. Um, in addition to the Destination NYU, we're also going to have the Trailblazer series. This is uh, basically a uh, TED Talk style presentations where you're going to get to hear from some of NYU's best uh, faculty members doing some cutting edge research. Um, we've also got the Navigating the College Application Session, which if you haven't submitted an application yet or you're uh, considering applying or maybe you're thinking ahead for next year, uh, you'll get to learn tips on the application process uh, from our NYU admissions counselors. But uh, we really do hope to see you at one of our upcoming virtual events. But uh, with that being said, that is the end of our session here. Listen, I, I really hope this was helpful for you. I know we had a lot of information to get through and you got fire trucks, you got student perspectives, hopefully you got uh, some valuable insight most importantly of all. But uh, if we weren't able to get to your questions today, again, I'm sorry, but just get in touch with us as an office. That's what we're here to do. Our office is closed right now, but you know, tomorrow or throughout the week, you're more than welcome to send us a, you know, give us a call, send us an email, and we're happy to connect with you. And speaking of connection, I would encourage you, uh, if you want to stay connected with us, uh, you can follow us on our social media platforms. You can find us at Meet NYU across most platforms. It's a really great way to keep up with what's going on at NYU. We have a lot of student takeovers as well, so you can get to see more of that student perspective. Um, so I guess, you know, I'll just kind of leave you with one personal note. You know, again, we aren't hosting in-person sessions right now, but when we are, we do hope you'll you know, have the opportunity to come out and connect with us in New York City or in one of our campuses. But I just want to personally thank you and leave you with a, a quick homework assignment. I know you probably didn't anticipate getting homework today, but needless to say, you are. Uh, I'm just going to challenge every one of you, uh, all of our guests here, um, to be thinking about this as you leave today. Because 2020, as I've said multiple times, has been uh, certainly the craziest year I've ever experienced, I think, for pretty much all of us as a society that we've ever experienced. And it's been a little bit chaotic and a little bit stressful at times. So I'm just going to ask you, Try to do something nice for someone, uh, whether it's a sibling or a parent or a classmate or a peer, or maybe one of your high school counselors. Um, do something nice for someone. Put an act of kindness out into the world. And if, look, we've got more than 100 people here right now. If each one of us put one small act of kindness into the world, I think we could do some pretty cool things. So uh, thank you so much for being here. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll see you at the future in NYU and you can be part of this community. So thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Stay safe and be well.